We had a baptism very recently. I had the privilege, Brother Ken asked me to bring a message for that baptism. Now he asked me to bring a message for this baptism. And I thank you, Brother Kent, for all the pressure. Thank you very much. Now, I, I kid, uh, I thank you for the privilege. The, the thing about this message is, as much as it's for you, Shellen, it's also for the whole world. Your baptism can be put to work. And can, uh, really our baptism is a witness for all the things that we truly believe of inside. It's our outward showing of what we're ready to proclaim to everybody. And, um, I know we'll be videotaping the baptism today and we'll give you a copy of that. So, you know, you can do what you wish with that um, CD when we have it done. Uh, if you want to show it to somebody, you'll be able to do that. Um, I'm sure there'll be pictures taken there. Uh, so it, it's a very special day. There's so much to talk about with baptism. There's so many things to touch on, and it's a great responsibility to, to talk about baptism because you want to get it right. And uh, yet you can't cover it all. We can only really scratch the surface. There's so many things. But really, once we've reached that stage of decision, uh, where we feel that godly repentance, that we really kind of reject all the things of this world that have encumbered us and tied us up, and we want to live for Christ, uh, and we want to put on Christ, uh, we're totally moving in the right direction at that point. So let's go into scripture. I'm, I've got a lot of scripture. I'm going to be brief with each one because I have to cover it. And some of this won't even come to mind till later. Uh, you'll, you'll hear some of it now and it'll prick your heart. But later some of it will come to mind and all of a sudden it'll make sense in a new situation. Um, we'll start with Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 is such a great chapter uh, regarding baptism. And it reads, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. And Paul is now saying that you are called to this vocation. And in the calling, the first step of that is baptism. This is where you enter in to the second birth. The first birth being of a woman, the second birth being of the watcher. The third birth later being of the full immersion of the Holy Spirit. Right now the Holy Spirit calls us, leads us to baptism, leads us to death and burial in the watery grave, and to newness of life where that Spirit dwells in us. And from then out calls us to that third baptism when Jesus will catch us up and change us in the twinkling of an eye and baptize us in the Holy Spirit into a new body in Christ to reign and live with Him in His kingdom. With all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The Spirit has a unity. There is a oneness to the Spirit of God. God is a Spirit. And if we're going to uh, be with Him, we, we will find other believers that, that want to be like Jesus too. Jesus uh, had a very special spirit. He had the Spirit of God. He received that Spirit also on His baptism. We saw that. And we know there are different spirits in the world, so we're looking to be unified in the similar and same Spirit uh, as all the other body of the believers in Jesus. There is one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. So it doesn't say there are many bodies, and it doesn't say there are many spirits in terms of believing in God. We know in the world there are many bodies, and we know in the world there are many spirits. But there's a oneness in God, and there's a oneness in God's people and their beliefs. One God, not 
a triune God, but one God. And Father of all, that's in verse 4, 6, who is above all and through all and in you all. And in verse 5 it says, one Lord. So why would it say in verse 6, one God and Father, and verse 5 it would say one Lord? Verse 5 speaking of Jesus, who is our Lord. One Lord. There's only one faith, and there's only one baptism. And yet we know in the world there are many faiths, there are many baptisms, and there, again, are many different beliefs. So we need to explore further what is exactly this oneness so we are baptized into the right decision. It's so easy to be caught in the world and deceived and, and baptized into anything. Believe it or not, it happens. Let's go down to verse 13. It says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of of the stature, of the fullness of Christ. As we become unified in this faith and we come to greater and greater knowledge in this faith and encourage one another, we are built up until we become perfect in Jesus. We're not perfect on our own, but through Jesus we are made perfect in Him. And by believing in everything He does and by keeping His Word and witnessing to it, He makes us perfect. And the church is his body. He is the head. And therefore, if we are his body, we must be perfect. Right? Individually, in the flesh, we do war, we do have our struggles. But in the unity of the Spirit, we're made perfect. Because that Holy Spirit is perfect. That's the Spirit of truth. That Spirit cannot have any shadow of turning or be in error at any time. That spirit must be true. Because God is truth. God does not err. And God has no shadow of turning. Verse 14, that henceforth we be no more children. Tossed to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man. What does that mean, the slight of man? It means like they're going to try and deceive us. By cunning craftiness. Whereby they lie in wait to deceive. How do they deceive? Through doctrine. Through doctrine. There are so many very, very, very well concealed doctrines out there. We know to counterfeit Jesus, you have to look like Jesus. We know to counterfeit the church, you have to look like the church. We know if I go in the store to pass a phony $100 bill, it has to look like a real $100 bill. And if the elect could be deceived in those last days, it would be possible. God has to cut those days short to save us. For even the elect can be deceived. Be aware, be on guard, brothers and sisters. Once you enter into this Baptism. Once you enter into the body of Christ, always watch, always pray, always be sober. Because Satan goes around like a roaring lion to devour who? Us. The world is lost. We are the ones he's coming after. And when you put on baptism, it is the next moment he's after you. So don't ever count it short. Don't think because you're filled with the Holy Spirit that the battle is over. It is the beginning. It is the beginning. He'll come at you with every cunning craftiness and deceivableness He can muster. He won't come to you straight up and straight out. He'll be like Eve in the garden. Are you sure God said? And He'll use the Word of God against you. 